Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this is the channel that's all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something you're interested in or if you're new to print-on-demand and would like some useful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and stick around. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over how to create this design right here. Another popular trending niche right now is row, row, row your vote. And for this design, I went ahead and incorporated some wavy text and went ahead and just kind of layered it in um, United States flags colors. So if this is a technique that you would like to learn how to do, go ahead and stick around. So as always, we're gonna start with our blank backdrop. It is 5400, sorry, 4500 by 5400 pixels. And I will be designing on black. So I'm gonna come up to the left-hand corner where it says background color, and I'm just gonna go ahead and select black to start with. Now this is gonna be a really quick and simple design. It's gonna be all text base, but I'm gonna show you how you can create a wavy, a wavy text. So if you've ever seen some of those more wavy or S-shaped text designs, it's a really easy thing to do. So what I'm gonna start with is just pulling up a text box. I can hit T on my keyboard and it will pull up a text box. Now from here, I can just type what I want. Now here's the, here's the trick. I'm gonna type the whole thing and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna separate this. So for this design, we are going to do another trending niche. Uh, this time it is row, row, row your vote. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and type row, row, row your vote. And so that is what we're typing here. Now to create a curve in the text, you would come up to effects and you've got all these different uh, text effects you can use down at the bottom. You can click curve and you know that you can curve your text one way or another. So now to make it look like it's wavy, what we would have to do is divide the text into two separate um, kind of separate text boxes and you'll curve one box one direction and the other box the other direction. And it's really that simple. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and flatten it back out. I'm gonna go ahead and put row, row, row in one box. I'm just gonna delete, oops, I'm gonna delete that, pull up another text box, and for this one, I'm gonna put your vote. And so now we've got two separate text boxes and we can wave them. So before I start doing that, I do wanna pick a font and then make sure that I've got the same size for each of these. So I want something that when I go ahead and um, change the font. I can make it fill the whole screen because I do want it to be nice and big. Now you can choose any font that you want for this. It really doesn't matter. So, you know, something big or bold is good. I got a bunch of the ones that I have recently used here. Um, again, you can pick anything you want. You can do distressed font. You can do block fonts. You can do just fun fonts. Um, you want it to be easily read. So again, it doesn't really matter what you choose as long as you can read it okay. So here's a fun one, row, row, row. I might just stick with this one. Row, row, row your vote. So it's kind of big. And what I can do is go ahead and resize this. Oop. And so what do I have here? This is 174 and this is 181. I want them to be the same size. So there's my 174, my 181. And right there it goes right across the page. Looks pretty good. So this is where I would start. Now, if you wanted to make these different colors, at this point it would be really easy to change the text color. But let's say I'm going to keep it all one color. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with my first line here. I'm going to click Effects. And let's say the first one I want to kind of curve down just a little bit. Now you can go a whole lot, that's gonna look really weird. So for this, you want a very subtle curve. So um, I might stick right there. So that's about 30. And so on the other one, I can do the same thing and we're gonna go the other direction. And I can also bring it to about 30 so that it's pretty close. It doesn't have to be exact. And then you're gonna bring this down and try to line it up so it looks like it's going straight across just like that. And now it says row, row, row your vote. 
So pretty easy. At this point, if I wanted to go ahead and duplicate this, it'd be really easy. So what I can do now is go ahead and group these together as one big image. So if I click and drag over both of them and click group, now I have one grouped text that I can move around and that I can duplicate. So now if I wanted to start at the top here and duplicate down, all I would have to do is from here, oops, click Control D and it's gonna duplicate it. And I can bring it down to about as far as I want in terms of separation. And then I can click Control D again and again and again, and it'll keep spacing them out like this. And I can go down as many times as I want and it'll give me this nice even spacing the whole way. So now I've got row, row, row your vote. Pretty cool. I could leave it like this. I could change the colors at this point. If I wanted to make it like flag type colors, I could. I could do, you know, like middle two, one color white, and then maybe the next one red and the next one blue. So there's a lot of different ways we can play with this. I might just leave it white because I think it, it stands out pretty good, but just giving you different ideas of what you, you know, can do you know, and I'd have to click on each of these separately there. So there's my row, row, row your vote. And I could even do an every other line kind of one, just red and blue. Um, so there's lots of different fun ways I could play with this. Maybe I wanted to do this a nice bright blue color. I can do it like that. Oops, let's go with the blue here. And so you can kind of see the way this would look. What the heck, I'll just do it again. Ooh. Ooh, make that one blue. Sure, why not? It's sometimes hard to select the right one. There you go. Now I've got one too many, or one too few. I guess I could go again and make this one red and then add another one at the bottom and repeat the process. So a lot of different ways we could go with this. Sure, I'll make it red, why not? Let me go ahead and duplicate that. I'll hit Control D, I'm gonna pull this one down and try to space it evenly right there. At this point, if I wanted to, and they all look like they're pretty lined up, I could group these together as well. So I could click anywhere down here, drag over all of them now, I can group that. Now I've just got one big flag I can move around. This is an easy way to resize your design. So if you wanted to take that and then make it smaller or take it and make it bigger, or maybe you initially made it and it was a little off-centered and you wanna be able to center it. If you just, when you're all done, group everything together, you can move it around however you like, resize it however you like. And a fun one with the flag is I can go ahead and I can angle it. So if I wanted it to really look angled, I could do something like this. And so now I've got an angled design. So that looks pretty cool. So I might just go ahead and stick with that. Really simple. This is a really trending common niche right now. Again, I'm sure you know why. <laughs> I'm sure you know why, and it might become really popular again um, once we get to the uh, more of the voting season. So this is definitely one that you might want to go ahead and start, and you can come up with a lot of different ways to go with uh, with this niche. So. This is just what I'm gonna do. I've got it titled up here, row, row, row your vote. I can come up to where it says share, drop down to download, leave it as a PNG, click transparent background, and then click download. And that is how you would go ahead and save your, uh, save your design for a t-shirt. It could go on a sweatshirt, it could go on, um, just about anything. A flag might look cool. Um, so you gotta be creative. Right now I wouldn't put it on a sticker as is because of the white here. Stickers have white backdrops, but if you wanted to change the white to black, then you could go ahead and put it on a sticker. Might look good as well. So a lot of different ways you can go with this. Anyways, simple technique. You can use it for lots of things. I hope you found this video useful and we'll see you again. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.